Hey guys, Lissa here, and Battleground Season 5 is going to be live next week. They just revealed the patch notes, so I'm going to be going through it and reacting to them. I haven't seen them yet. I saw a tiny glimpse of them. But let's go through all the stuff that's coming to us Season 5 uh, next week, Tuesday. It's going to go live at 1 Eastern. That is uh, 19 in Central Europe. That is 10 a.m. Pacific. So... Here is the patch notes. They're so big that they have a table of contents. Uh, we're going to start off with the Battleground stuff because that's what we care about. Battleground Season 5 is here. If you haven't heard yet, competitors throughout Azeroth are gathering in the tavern for gladiatorial con or contests. <laughs> uh, there's over 30 new minions, 7 opponents, and a slew of new anomalies to master. The competition's never been fiercer. Let's go. So... August 22nd, Season 4 will end, just like I said. Season 5 will begin, and that means you will need to buy a new ba Season Pass if you want to pass. Um, and Battleground Quests will be gone. Your MMR will be reset to zero, and there will be a new uh, reward track with new art. Now, this happens a lot, and people get confused. When you enter the game on Tuesday, it won't be set to zero automatically. You're going to see your old MMR score and then you'll enter a game, and when you are done with your very first game, then your MMR will drop to zero and then add what you earned from that game. So just be aware that that's always what happens. And uh, Battleground Season Pass should be like $15, I believe. I do have six codes to give out for a free season Battleground Pass. Uh, so make sure you tune into my Twitch stream so you can win a Battleground Season Pass. There is a new gameplay system called Anomalies. Battleground Season 5 introduces a chaotic new seasonal system, Anomalies. Um, this is where you're going to get a rule given to you at the beginning of a game. And it can be something crazy, something simple. Uh, but the rule you will see prior to picking a hero. There's lots and lots of anomalies that you can get. You don't get to pick them. It's not like other games like TFT where you get to select it or vote on it. It just is picked for you. Prior to starting, <laughs> there will be an initial pool of anomalies at the season launch, and then new anomalies will be added to the pool each week throughout Battleground Season 5. The following anomalies will be available from the beginning. So this is what we're starting with starting Tuesday. Uh, there's a lot to go over, a lot of rules, so these will be fun. The first one is Prudence of Amethyst. Unspent gold carries over to your next turn. If you saved at least five, gain one extra. This is, <laughs> I feel like this is going to be very challenging, like very high skill, high risk, high reward stuff going on here. Feels a lot like TFT where it's more of an economy game. So um, unspent gold carries over. So that means you don't want to just be rolling and window shopping all the time. You might just want to hold so that you get that two extra gold the next turn. So it makes it easier to level or something like that. All right. Our next uh, anomaly is anti-gravity stadium. Minions in the tavern have their attack and health swapped. <sighs> oh my gosh. That'll make the game feel super weird. It'll confuse my brain for sure. Interesting. Okay. I don't have much to say about it. It's definitely going to confuse my brain because then minions that you think are strong are going to be weak or minions that you think are weak might be actually strong. All right. Might of Kazgoroth. At the end of your turn, set your left and right most minions attack to the higher of the two. Okay. That's nothing crazy, nothing, nothing crazy there. But then the fortitude of Kazgaroth is at the end of your turn, set the left and right most minions health to the higher of the two. So in that situation, so yeah, you put like your smallest minion and your biggest minion on the left and the right for both situations to try and scale them. Unless it's a card you plan on selling quickly. All right. Money match. That is our next one. Start at 10 gold. This one's very interesting because like turn one, you can just get to leveling. Um, so I think this will be like a hyper level kind of situation. Uh, level, grab a bunch of minions, level again. I don't know. I, that one, we're going to have to figure the meta out for that one. And it will probably 
settle pretty fast how you play that 10 gold out. Denathrius Anima Reserves is all heroes are Sire Denathrius. Basically, that is just a quest lobby. Everyone gets to pick a quest turn one. You don't get to pick a quest on turn four because that only happens during quest meta. So it's just kind of like having quest meta again, but the quest is picked turn one. So um, up next is Uncompensated Upset. Start at one gold. <laughs> okay, start at one gold. Minions cost one, but sell for zero. Upgrading the tavern costs two less. Wait, what? Oh gosh. Everyone's brain is gonna be melting, I feel like, at first. Maybe it will become more intuitive as you, as you play it. But like right now, it's so intuitive to do like, it costs three, it sells for one. And then when you play Millhouse, it's less intuitive until you get used to Millhouse, right? So this is gonna be like, okay, start at one gold, minions cost one. Sell for nothing though. You can't like cycle, but like tokens will still give you money. No, they won't. It costs one, you, they both sell for zero. <laughs> oh God. Oh gosh. Upgrading the tavern costs two less though. We will see how that one pans out. Next up, we have Secrets of Norganon. Tavern Tier 7 exists. Start with 10 extra armor. So we have found out with this patch that there's now a Tavern Tier 7. You can get to it just like any other tavern. You have to level to it. If you triple a 6 drop, now you'll triple it into a 7. And there is 7 drops for um, your, uh, your selling boy. What's his name? Patient Scout. Um, so you get to this kind of just like every other tavern tier, but it only exists when um, Secrets of Norganon is your anomaly. And all anom there's like 20 anomalies to start with, but Secrets of Norganon has a higher rate to, to see it. You get to see it, it's like five times higher than the others. So the others are one out of 20. I guess it's one out of 25 or 24 or something. The Secrets of Norganon is five out of, so. Transient treasures. At the start of your turn, choose from two new quest rewards. So you get a, re so it's not choosing a quest. You're getting a reward. Meaning you don't have to complete anything. You just have the reward for the turn. Nguyen's shifting discs. All heroes are Master Nguyen. That's a fun one. Next up, we have Bring in the Buddies. Buddies are in the tavern. So Buddies be back. We kind of called that yesterday. We said, what if they just made anomalies for each thing? For prizes are in, quests are in, buddies are in. We've already seen quests twice and buddies once. So, yeah. Okay, this one looks confusing. It's a, it's a novel. Oops, all blank. This anomaly has a version for beasts, pirates, dragons, elementals, mechs, murlocs, naga, cobra, undead, and demons. What it means is that only that minion type and neutrals are in the tavern for the game. When this anomaly is active, the number of each minion in the pool is increased to fill out the tavern. Five times the number of each minion of the selected type and two times the number of each neutral minion. Like, for example, oops, all pirates. Also has one extra adjustment. Captain Hogger is added to the minion pool. Yar. Oh. So if it's oops all Quillbore, then everyone has to go Quillbore or neutral or a mix of Quillbore and neutral. Everyone in the whole lobby is going to be playing Quillbore. But you're not fighting over stuff for the most part because there's extras of everything in the shop. But pirates, there's a Hogger added which is very exciting that's pretty cool that everyone will be playing hogger i'm just going to suggest to you this now if you see oops all blank you should pick someone like tess or rafam or scabs and steal their shit right because then you can steal the good stuff all right a fair reward Instead of minions, 
triple rewards discover a tier one dark moon prize upgrades in three turns oh so in a fair reward you can't triple into a minion you triple into a prize interesting huh okay okay that's gonna make the game play out very differently Finicky Hourglass, start at Tavern Tier 2. All right, there's more tokens on Tier 2 for the most part, so that's kind of cool. Not for the most part, for certain situations. I don't know. Packed Stands. This tavern always has seven minions. You're basically old school Arana. Yeah, the powers of these are definitely very varied. But that's why everyone gets the same rule. Everyone gets the same anomaly. So it's not going to be unbalanced in that way. Double header. The first time you buy a minion each turn, get an extra copy of it. Ooh. So you got to be careful on your order, Lulling. The first time you buy a minion each turn, get an extra copy of it. Echoes of Argus. Your battle cries and death rattles trigger an extra time. If I've learned anything from this quest meta, that the extra battle cry and extra death rattle is pretty freaking broken. So now you get both. That's insane. False idols is you only need two copies of a minion to make it golden. Instead of a triple reward, get a gold coin. Is that just a regular coin? <laughs> Am I being dumb? Do you just get a coin when you triple? So it's basically saying you don't get rewarded by getting a tier higher minion, but you do get rewarded if that triple is valuable. So like, for example, um, when Faux Reaper triples, he just gets bigger. He doesn't do anything special. But if your Light Fang triples, which we know it won't because it's been removed from the minion pool, if that tripled, it actually does something more valuable, right? 4-4 four, four instead of 2-2. Two, two. Triple brand's valuable, stuff like that. All right. Grapnel of the Titans. The first minion you buy each turn is free. So that's like Arana. So I wonder if you can't do that if Arana's offered. The Golden Arena. All minions are golden. But you do not get triple rewards. Dev comment. This includes cards that are discovered or generated by other cards. So everything is just double trouble. Double trouble. Alrighty. So those are our initial anomalies that are coming live next week. Anomalies coming throughout 27.2. Additional anomalies will be added to the pool each week throughout 27.2. When anomalies are newly added to the anomaly pool, they'll have an increased appearance rate for that week. Here are some of the additional ones. Big League. Only Tavern Tiers 3, 4, 5, and 6 exist. Our next one is Little League. Only Tavern Tiers 1, 2, 3, and 4 exist. Everything's on fire. At the start of the game, take 30 damage. At the start of the game, take 30 damage. Whenever another hero dies, regain 5 health. Dev comment, this is fine. <laughs> this is fine. I don't trust the devs. I don't think this is fine. All right, Wisdom of Uldu Ulduar? Uldar? At the end of every three turns, set your rightmost minion's stats to 15-15. It's so good in the start and so bad at the end. <laughs> at the end, you're just going to be throwing Leroy's on the far right. Like, don't mess up my big minions I've created. <laughs> it's going to... Like, what if you're playing... Uh, Illidan, and you have two giant cleaves on the left and right. And it's like, ah, we're going to ruin that cleave. Ah, nope. 
overseer's orb after you upgrade the tavern refresh it with minions of your most common type hmm. after you upgrade the tavern refresh it with minions of your most common type That's pretty cool hamul hamul perfected alchemy start with a gold Goldenizer, a goldenizer that makes a friendly minion golden. Keep in mind it says friendly minion, so you can't make a minion in the shop golden. It's kind of like Reno, where it may be on your board and then you don't get to discover. Blood of Sargeras. At the start of your turn, set your hero's health to 12. At the start of your turn. So that's like. So you could die like turn four. <laughs> oh. well, luckily, this is like one of the last ones they're adding. It looks like it looks like this is getting added in a so, uh, somewhere down the road. <laughs> Mimir Mimiron's Clockwork Stadium. You cannot upgrade the tavern with gold. It upgrades itself every two turns. Oh man, people who can't level are going to love this. I feel like recently in the last couple weeks, I've had numerous people be like, I don't know when to level. I feel like I see it in my chat daily. Now you can just rely on that to level for you. Path of the Treasure Seeker. After you refresh ten, five times, find a golden monkey. Elise is back. Find the golden monkey. That's pretty cool. All right. That is it for the anomalies for now. I don't know if they'll have more that they haven't announced, but it seems pretty crazy already. All right. Our new hero is Thornstorm Lord. Choose your champion is his hero power. It's passive. At the start of the game, discover a tier seven minion to get after you spend 65 gold. So not all games have tier seven minions in it, but you can still get this hero at any time. You're going to pick a tier seven you want. And after you spend 65 gold, you're going to get it. So keep that in mind. You don't want a tier seven that you need to triple. I doubt you need to triple many tier sevens. That'd be really hard, but you're going to be possibly the only person in your lobby with a tier seven. Alrighty. Some hero updates. Uh, Cariel has now been nerfed. Instead of giving three friendly minions 1-1, one, one, she now gives two friendly minions 1-1. One, one. Kurtris uh, is after you buy three minions, discover a plain copy of one of them. Holy crap. It's pretty broken. Okay. These are new minions we've already looked at. So if you haven't seen them, I suggest watching RD's video um, or just checking out the patch notes yourself. We, these have kind of already been reviewed. So I'll leave the patch notes in the description for this video. These are the ones that I revealed. These are my cards. Um, we let's look at this dev comment for this one. This one was. Whenever this attacks, it shifts to stats to survive with one health. This respects venomous poison. If it's going to take damage from a minion with one of those effects, it will not shift its stats. All right, let's talk about the tier seven minions because we've only seen four of these. So there's 10 more to look at. We've seen Argent Braggart. We've seen, oh, we have not seen King Varian. King Varian has entered, entered the battlegrounds. Tier seven, nine, nine. When you sell this, discover two tier six minions. Cool. It's a token. I like it. Easy enough. Next up, we have Moira. Moira Rose. No, Royra Bronze. Bronze Beard. A uh, three nine. Your battle cries and death rattles trigger twice. Not an extra time. Twice. Keep that in mind. Do, 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 do. Papa bear, more like pimp daddy bear. Summon three mama bears. Pimp 
Pimp Daddy. Champion of Sargeras. We've seen this one. Minions in the tavern have 1010. This is a demon. Recurring Nightmare is a tier 755. Death Rattle. Give a different friendly undead Death Rattle. Summon a recurring nightmare. So this is just going to occur until you're out of undeads. This is crazy. This will be very optimal if you have buffed the attack of your undeads a lot. So if you have a highly buffed attacks for undeads, this is going to be a card you want. What if you have Titus with it? Uh, it's going to be the new frog of undead with Titus. It's a it's a it's a froggy undead situation, I believe. Yep. Okay, frogs back. Undead frogs. <laughs> Our recurring nightmare. I wish they would have made this a little bit more frog like then. Captain Sanders. Oh, he looks like a fun time. Captain Sar Sanders is a seven seven pirate. Make a friendly minion golden. Battle cry. Again, it's friendly. It's not in the shop, so you don't get to discover. You just make a friendly minion golden. Does not need to be a pirate. It can be any minion you desire. So that's a good one to triple into. Right? I could go with any board. We have Tide Oracle Morgul. Poison! Poison's back. 110 Poison. When this attacks and kills a minion, give its maximum stats to a minion in your hand. It's not a hand buff, but it's poison, not venom. That's crazy. That's wild. It's tier seven, baby. Some tier seven for you. All right, tier seven elemental granite guardian. Granite guardian? Granite. 117. <laughs> 117 taunt. Whenever this attacks. Wait, whenever this is attacked, reduce the attacker's health to one. Perfect. It's its own little venom. It's its own little poison. You're going to want to scale that one's health. And you might just want to run a blaster to get rid of any Leroy's that could kill it. All right, uh, Sea Witch Zarjira is the Naga for Tier 7. Spellcraft, choose a different minion in the tavern to get a copy of. So you can't pick a Sea Witch Zarjira, but you can choose a different minion in the tavern to get a copy of it. So it just kind of creates pairs if you buy the minion. Okay. Obsidian Ravager is a tier 7 4 4 dragon. Whenever this attacks, deal damage equal to its attack to the target and adjacent minions. So it's a dragon cleave. We have a dragon cleave. Whenever this attacks, deal damage equal to its attack to the target and and an adjacent minion. So it doesn't actually hit the minion. So it's before the attack, the damage is dealt to the minion and to the one next to it. So let's say you kill the minion and the one next to it. You don't, or let's say you just kill the minion you're attacking with the attack damage. You're not actually going to take the damage of the health because it attacks first. That is what we're getting from this. When it attacks, it deals the damage. It, like, shoots the damage. Like, fire. Okay. Okay. But then, it's only to one adjacent. And next to it is the actual cleave version. Alrighty. Boom Mobile, if you haven't seen this one yet, it's a magnetic with Reborn, Divine Shield, Taunt, and Wind Fury. Pretty good. Lots of stats there. We got our Quillbore. It is a 9-3 Sanguine Champion. Battlecry and Death Rattle. Your Blood Gems give an extra 1-1 this game. 
So every time it dies, it's going to scale that up. It's a battle cry as well. And you can make death rattles trigger twice or extra times and all that stuff. Okay. Okay. Amalgadon is back. Six attack, six health, battle cry for each different minion you type you control. Randomly adapt. The dong is back. What did we say earlier? Life is like a penis. Life is like a dong. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. But it's never always hard. <laughs> um. All right, dong is back. Uh. Note that this is a revision to a prior version of the card, but now a tier 7. I assume it can still adapt to Poison and Divine Shield. <laughs> YouTube's getting demonetized. No, it won't. All right, here are the following minions that have been removed. Sparring Partner. That's the one that gives Taunt at tier 2. Spawn of Nazoth. That's the 2-2 two -two death rails. Give everyone 1-1. One -one. Vigilant Stormborn. Stoneborn. Is that the 2-6 that gives taunt? I think it is. Karaji Harbinger is the 5-5 five five that buffs taunt things. Tortolan Blue Shell. The minion that sells and gives you 5 gold. I'm going to miss that one. He was a banger. Champion of Yasharj. Light Fang Enforcer is dead. Rat Pack, dead. Eventide Brute, dead. Puffer Quill, dead. Prophet of the Board, dead. Gem Splitter, dead. Upbeat Flutist, Plague Tight Walker, Ring Matron, Terragosa, Sanctum Ruster, Nadina, Prize Promo Drake, General Dracosath, Molten Rock, Felmental, Upbeat Upstart, Magma Lock, Crackling Cyclone, Smogger, Annoya Troop, Harvest Golem, Mechagiraxis, War Gear, Greasebot, Ghoul of the Feast, Xylobones, Radio Star, Mini Myrmidon, Thorn Captain, Snail Calvary, Thorn Collar, Backstage Security, Briny Bootlegger, Battlemaster, Colossus of the Sun, Scavenging Hyena, Cyborg Drake, Manted Queen, Bone Mare, Bristlemane Scrapsmith, Mistake, and Tavern Tempest. All those cards are gone. Um, maybe if my editor has time, he can put in all the images of everything I just named because... Half the people probably don't know what these cars are. Too quick? Try again. Did you get it? Here it is. Coming in from the left. Uh, the following 11 minions have returned. Reef Explorer. Don't remember that. Treasure Seeker Elise. Our 5-5. Five five. When you roll five times, you get to uh, discover a golden... Mithrax, the Unraveler, Banner Boar, Captain Flat Tusk, Captain Flat Tusk. Oh, Captain Flat Tusk is back. Uh, Floating Watcher, Floaty Boy, Razor Gore, Party Elemental, Mechano Tank. Mechano Tank is back. Omega Buster, and Nightmare Amalgam. And hopefully my YouTube better can put all those images in. This, that's a lot of work. <laughs> uh, all right. Some minion updates. Um, Eternal Summoner is now a 6-1 instead of an 8-1. And it... Oh. The golden version is now a 12-2 reborn death row summon a golden eternal knight. Oh, wait, what? So instead of summoning two eternal knights, you summon a golden. It makes for more space on your board, which is better. They're just going to be bigger. So it makes it easier to run death rattle stuff with this, like um, Titty. Interesting. Will scale slower, that's true. Or no. Will they? Honcho, which should have been removed from the... Why are we leaving Honcho in? Why is this still in the game? It has nothing to do with hand buff Murlocs. We don't... I, mm, we don't need to...
scale Murlocs health. Except for now that we have tier 7 poison Murlocs. Maybe it's good with those. This is the most worthless card in the game right now. Why didn't we remove it? After you play Murloc, give two friendly Murlocs one health. So it can give itself health. I still just don't think that it vibes with the current Murloc feel. I think it should be removed. I don't understand why they kept it in. All right, King Bagurgle is now battle cry. Give your other Murlocs 2-3. No longer has a death rattle. No longer has a death rattle. Slightly bigger health as well. Young Murkai is now an 8-5 over a 9-6. And at the end of your turn, adjacent minions trigger their battle cries. Ooh, it's a buff. Oh, it's a solid buff. When golden at the end of your turn, adjacent minions trigger their battle cries twice. So previously it was just the left. Golden, it was both left and right. Now it's both left and right as regular and left and right twice golden. And keep in mind, Amalgadon is back. Party Elemental is back and has been changed slightly. It was previously a 4-2. Now it is a 2-5, tier 3, instead of a tier 2. After, after you play an elemental, give an elemental other than it 1-2. So it can't scale itself. It could scale other elementals. Now it used to say give another random friendly elemental 1-1. One, one. Now it says give, another, give an elemental other than it 1-2. Doesn't say friendly, so I think it can scale the shop. Oh, so it won't scale your Celemental. Ah, got it. So if you play Celemental, your Celemental won't accidentally get buffed. It will have to buff something else other than the Celemental. I see, I see, I see. But it doesn't say friendly. What well, says friendly here? It doesn't say friendly here, but it says friendly here. Give, after you play an elemental, give a friendly elemental other than it one, two. I'm going to trust the card art as well. So basically, it's just saying it's going to buff your board, not the shop. And it just won't buff the elemental you're cycling. So that's a positive. Okay. Wildfire elemental. This is a text change only with no functional change. So I'm not going to read it. Next, Lava Lurker. The new version of Lava Lurker says the first spellcraft enchantment on this on this each turn is permanent. All right, the first spellcraft enchantment. Dev, let's read the dev comment because I don't know what that means. This change means that the Lava Lurker's effect won't be consumed if it's targeted by spellcraft spells that don't leave enchantments. Oh. Like Seaborn Summoner or Sea Witch Zarajira. Okay. So there's two new spellcrafts that don't buff a card. It doesn't buff the card. So it wouldn't be a benefit to Lava Lurker. But you can use it on the Lava Lurker first. And then do a buff on the Lava Lurker. And it will ex save the buff. It will save the buff. Hmm. All righty. Banner Boar is now a tier 4 with 3-5. Piloted Whirlatron. Sneed's buddy has been changed to copy a di different friendly minion's death rattles. This change is made to avoid bugged interactions. With the change, Sneed has been returned to the hero pool and piloted Whirlatron has been returned to ETC's hero pool. Didn't even know it was freaking gone. Okay. This is the updated armor. I'm I'm not going to go over it because I don't know what it was prior. You can check this out on your own. Whee! New Battleground Track Season 5 has 12 epic hero skins, 6 rare hero skins, 6 epic emotes, 8 rare emotes, and an epic bartender and legendary strike. That's it for this Battlegrounds patch. I know it wasn't much. You no, know, it was a lot. So uh, make sure you leave a comment below about what you're most looking forward to 
tune in to my Twitch stream live Monday morning for an early access viewing of these cards and get ready to play them on Tuesday, August 22nd live. I hope you enjoyed and have a good day. Bye. What does that mean? Size matters, so people can check out what size they are by typing the command size. See if they're chonkers or dinkers or average or growers or showers. Chonkers, dinkers, average, growers, showers.